I'm doing well. I'm doing well. First of all, thank you so much for being a part of One on One with Courtney Stark. First of all, I got to tell you how excited everybody is to see you and to have you on the show. We have been waiting for this all day. So I'm honored. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Oh, my goodness. I don't even, I, I, you know how you just, in my mind, I had, this is what I'm going to start with him. But just seeing you in person and kind of having this conversation, I'm saying to myself, wow, this man has been a, a intricate part of my life. I got to tell you, I got to, I got to say, if I've grown up, <laughs> definitely been a part of that. So thank you for being here. Absolutely. I appreciate you for having me. No, you are welcome. I, mean, I want to kind of just start off just kind of letting people know, you know, for those of you who just are under a rock and just don't know, um, Jay Holiday is from the DMV. And uh, absolutely. I, I didn't, I was today years old when I realized that DMV was DC, Maryland, DC, Maryland and Virginia. Sure. <laughs> didn't, didn't know, didn't know any of it's that. Not good. <laughs> so um, I'm sorry. I'm saying, what are you, I, you know, I'm, I'm shouting it out, saying all these things, but never knowing until today. So for where, you, where you from? Life, huh? Where you from? I'm from Brooklyn. You know, New York oh, okay. City. Okay. How, so how you don't know that's the DMV is that? It's that listen, close. Uh, listen, that's how under a rock I am. From, like, I know of the places, but the acronym thing just kind of slipped okay. by my my you. membrane. So try don't try it to my heart. You know what I mean? I got you. Nah, you are good. You are good. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about growing up in the DMV. I know that you lived there before you moved to Atlanta. So, um, yeah, how was it like growing up in the, um, the, the DC area? Um, I mean, it was it was like uh, it ain't like growing up in New York. I can tell you that. But mm -hmm. um, but because we had everything so close together, you know what I'm saying. We got DC, Maryland, Virginia, and then you got Baltimore down the street, and then. Uh, Atlantic City is a hop, skip, and a jump. Philly is a hop, yeah. skip, and a jump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we had access to a lot of different cities. You know what I'm saying? We weren't just confined to the DMV area. Um, you know, just uh, musical influences and stuff like that. We from kind of like all the way up and down 95. and You know what I'm saying? So um, it was cool. It was just the go-go thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I had the opportunity to, to sing in a, a few go-go bands. And my mom was just like, no, nah, I'm not having it. Uh, you know, she just, she wasn't with the go, cause she know like the go-go bands is going to be out all night. You know what I'm saying? You got shows, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I, they wanted me to do this in high school. You know what I'm saying? Mm. She was like, she was like, boy, if you don't go get your diploma and stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and isn't that um, how moms are all like, you, ain't, uh, you better sing, you better sing man. them grades. One, one thing, yeah, right. <laughs> one thing my mom was not having was she wasn't like a, um, she wasn't trying to be no momager. She wasn't about the money. You know what I'm saying? She was about, mm. you got to go finish school and then you can do whatever you want to once you finish school. Um, so that's how growing up in the DMV was for me. I couldn't do yeah. nothing. And then, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like my mom been a preacher as well. We in church. Like I go to church, but I can't go say, you know what I mean? But <laughs> it's all good though. You know what I'm saying? Um, she instilled some, she instilled some good, uh, some good values in me, man. And uh, yeah. I appreciate it because um, one, you see how the child stars end up most of the time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, some some do very well, and then some just kind of like, oh, well, what happened to that person, whatever. You know what I mean? I think it's a little harder for them trying to transition into adulthood, especially, like, you know, with your fans and all that stuff. So I was appreciative of her holding back, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. at the same time, uh, your time is your time. I feel like I came out in the right time, you know what I'm saying? I agree. So, um, yeah, growing, I mean, it was it was growing up with a, with a preacher as a mom, man. And, mm. And having to wear, having to go to church <laughs> Monday through Sunday, you know, in the youth study, Bible study. Trust me, I All the studies. We are, yeah. we are the, alike in this. That I was, I was in church Monday through Sunday. That when I finally took a break, I ran. I was out. It was. Oh, there nah. was no the first, the first Sunday. My mother said, "Nah, you ain't got to go this week." Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this again next week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> but no, nah, she was just like, I mean, at this point, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I've I've taught you what you needed to know. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And you don't want to, you don't necessarily want to be here. So you know what I mean? Like, I'd rather you be at home than falling asleep in front of the preacher. You know what, mm. what I'm saying? So yeah. So I mean? let's, but, uh, we kind of mix into cool. we mix it into your talent, right? Uh -huh. And your creativity and your voice. At what point did you realize that? 
wait a minute, this is something that, I, that I'm good at, that I could do, that I want to take professionally? Um, well, I did it, like, so I, um, you know, like, you do the, the little cute uh, school plays when you're in kindergarten and stuff like that. That's yeah. my first time on stage. I didn't have no words. All I just had to do was just stand on stage and do what I needed to do. Mm. Um, but I was in chorus all through elementary school, all through middle school, all through yeah. high school. Well, actually, it started in middle school, all through middle school, all through high school. Um, not, not, uh, Beknownst to me that I was actually training myself at the time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I've always, I've always sung, you know. Um, yeah. as far as professionally, uh, I started a few after school programs because I went to a few schools that so they just didn't have anything for for artists like poets or singers or rappers. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's kind of racist. But mm -hmm. I, at the time, at the time I didn't think of it like that. But now when I think back on it, I'm like, they really didn't have nothing for us. And I had to I, I started one in two different schools. And yeah. I just felt like kids wanted to, you know, we wanted to hang out after school. We weren't doing them but just chase the girls. So it's like, why don't we actually <laughs> do something? And yeah, you know, why don't we actually do something with our talents? And so I started a few singing groups. And that's when I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. This is mm. this is what I'm gonna do, you know. And then just being able to just start different different programs and um, you know just to 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 actually see my leadership skills you know kind of put me in the mode of okay I'm the leader of the group I founded the group I'm you know what I mean like it was, yeah. it, was it was easy to fall into that into that line and then we was just like we can we can do it like the best of them mm. so that, that was like around ninth ninth grade, ninth grade. yeah so yeah. then this this group that you started ended mm. up being something that you decided to want to go into professionally. Um, uh, yeah. Right? So you take this group, you're trying to go out, you're trying to get signed, <clears throat> you're trying to do these things. Um, talk about those hardships and those challenges because there's so many groups out, right? What makes your group stand yeah. out? What makes you different? And at what point were you like, okay, well, I'm going to end up doing my own solo thing because this group may not be working. For sure. Um, okay, so... We, we started a group at, at one point it was like five of us you know mm. what i'm saying and we we had the harmonies on lock we had the you know we we was we was dope you know and we was just like well, we can compete with the drew hills we can like we could we could compete because we could yeah. sing you know what i mean like we literally all of us could sing so um we did that and then two of them two of the members was just they was living at home and you know they folks was like look y'all got this singing thing ain't making y'all no money Mm. So they so they ended up going to the army. You know what I'm saying? They went to the yeah. army together. So then it was just three of us. And then we added another member named Otis. Um, There's always an Otis. There's always an Otis, Otis somewhere. Otis. <laughs> always. And now Otis, shouts out to uh, Otis. We call him Keenan, though, but shouts out to Otis. And, um, you know, so he became the other lead singer with me. And um, But it's so messed up about the industry because, I mean, and now that he's, He's older, you know what I'm saying? He done came into his look and all that stuff. But back then, it was like he was still trying to figure it out. And, you know, he didn't have the great, the greatest uh, artist look that, that people mm. say, you're supposed to look like this. Yeah. So um, at this point, me and my group, we had been together for about five, six years. And we had just added him in. And then we got our, we got our, uh, basically, we got to sit down in front of TA, um, Anthony Tate, who is the person that brought us down to Atlanta. Um, the discovered Sierra, so on and so on. Um, mm -hmm. And that was a relationship that my then manager, Corey Green, had. And so he came up to DC, he came to see us, he saw us and was like, Yeah, y'all got to get rid of the dude. And Ooh. so, but for us, it was an easy decision because he was the new member. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like, ah, we don't care. But it was just kind of like, bro, we've been at this for five, six years. We're not, we not passing up on this opportunity. So I understand. we literally moved to Atlanta the next week. He came on a Saturday. We went to Atlanta the next Saturday. Uh, he put us up in his house and all that until until we could figure out all, all, all of the living situation type stuff. We left our jobs, our houses, all that, our cars, everything. Mm. And um, we ran around Atlanta got our music together, got with Brian Michael Cox, John T. Austin, uh, JQ. Um, and then that's when I met Carrie, uh, Carrie Hilson. She was in the clutch. Uh, so they were, all of these people are writing for us. And so now we're, we're sitting in front of these labels. We're sitting in front of these labels. And this is over a year's worth of time. And 
we just came in where people was like, ah, man, another group. Like, ah, they sound good, but it's another group. Like, right, right. <laughs> like, we yeah. don't want to see another group. Another <laughs> group. Come on. And, um, yeah, so long story short, nobody signed us. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't just me just like, I'm going to lead a group. So we had a few meetings. And, no, actually, we had, we had like maybe 10, 10, 12 meetings in different labels. And just nobody was signing. So I think we were supposed to have one more meeting with uh, So So Deaf. And um, at this point, they was just like, look, man, it's looking a little shaky. I don't know if it's going to happen for y'all, but it's not over. Y'all just going to have to be, y'all going to have to start over and do some new music because everybody's heard this music. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that was when I was like, oh, new. So look, this right. is what you about to do. You know what I'm right. saying? I mean, because at this point, I'm I'm tired. And if I'm going to be tired, I'd rather be tired and have to depend on myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And at this point, people are, I, we went to about four or five meetings where they was like, we don't like the group, but we'll take the lead singer. And I was just like, no. I passed on like five deals. Wow. You know, and um, because I just, I was, everybody was like, man, he don't lead a group. He don't lead a group. I'm like, maybe eventually, but why y'all mm. putting that thought in my head? You know what I'm right. saying? People branch out and go do other things. Um, But yeah, I passed on like five deals. So then, um, I told him, I was like, look, y'all know I'm stuck with y'all through all this. If this so-so deaf meeting don't go good or it don't happen, I'm going to have to go step out on my own because to start over, I'm already on 80% of the songs. Right. So I'm already singing most of the song anyway. I might as well just, I might as well just go, thing, on, right. go on, You're on ready. my own. Right. Yeah. So the so-so deaf meeting didn't happen. And um, yeah, man, that was, that was the end of my group, man. Oh, my goodness. So yeah. I can only, I know that couldn't have gone well. No, I mean, I sat him down. I didn't just leave him. I told him, I said, if this if this don't go well, this y'all know this is done. Like, I'm right. going to go this way. So they had to respect it because it, it wasn't like I was just started doing music behind their back. And yeah, right, just, right, right. I all of a sudden had an album. You, you know wasn't trying to Frankie Lyman them. I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't doing no Dustin's Child on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, and that's not that's not no shots to, uh, to, to be honest like that. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you, you start to work on your own stuff i just was for me personally i was against taking any attention away from the group until yeah. it was just focused on me you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, and that's a yeah, noble that's, thing that's right that's, that that's a noble thing because a lot of times at the first hat people are running they, they want to run right it it yeah. sounds good and people are willing to lead the dog the wife the kids the house and everything oh, yeah. go now la, LA Reed was one of the first ones i was like man i like the lead singer what y'all trying to do with him mm. and they came to me and was like look you said you want to get signed. I'm like, not like this, though. Right. You know and L.A. Right. Reed ended up signing me to Def Jam years later. But, right. Yeah. You know, so you finally you go and you do this on your own. And I think, you know, a lot of people, because even when I first heard the story, I was like, OK, well, then he probably was off to the off to the races. But it wasn't that nah. easy either. So let's talk about um, signing going on your own. Was, but, oh, you, you said know, it was. It actually, it actually was. I mean, it was. It was lonely, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. used to be in my group. I've been with them five, six years, you know what I'm saying? So every we do everything together. We go to the mall together. We talk to girls yeah. together. We do everything, you know what I'm saying? So it was just lonely. And then I had to figure out my sound. I didn't, I can't sound like the group. I can't sound like three people, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, I mean, obviously you can, but um, you know, there's a there's a there's a point of tones and 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 different things that different group members bring to the table, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out my sound, and that's when I started going back to like my roots, sort of like the Marvin Gaye's and the Stevie Wonder's and the Donny Hathaway's, and uh, just started kind of like really because all, all we we would group everything, every group, mm. group, group, group. Any group come out, we want to know uh, right. from the white groups to the black groups. We was just groups, 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 groups. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I mean, I always had my, you know, I'm listening to D'Angelo on the side. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I'm, I was a, a connoisseur of the R&B art. Yeah. But, um, yeah, once I figured out my sound, so it took me about, first of all, I went I went back home to D, uh, to D.C. for like two months. Oh, I did I did a few records. Um, I did a few records. I was like, all right, cool, this is a good sound, but I need a break. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I went back home to D.C. And I was there for like two, I was supposed to be there for like a week. Yeah. I was just like, man, I ain't going back. <laughs> was that in that part of your time? Was that like, I'm almost, I'm done. I'm just about done with this. Absolutely. That's, um, that's actually, I wrote back of my lap in DC. You mm. know what I'm saying? And um, so I already had ghetto. 
I had Fatal. Fatal was the um, Fatal is actually my group. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I told them I was gonna keep that record. Um, and I, you know, what I'm saying I made sure that they they got credits in the, in the, uh, in the credits and all that stuff. You know, mm-hmm. um, so I had I had Fatal Ghetto, another song called City Boy, and um, I think that was it at the time. And so I went home. Was like, yo, I just need, bro, I need a recording break. I just, I yeah. just need a break. I want to go see my friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, at the time, uh, at the time I had a baby on the way, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I had to go, you know what I'm saying, check in with her mom, and, you know, because her mom was back in D.C. So it was just like, I was home. I was beyond yeah. home sick. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And um, that weighs I, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, listen, I got to, I got to go. I want, <laughs> I want, I want some curry out. I want some, uh, <laughs> you know, I want some, I want some crabs. I want, you know what I mean? Nobody understands that East Coast living <laughs> unless you live on the East Coast. Yeah, you, you get away from the bodega. You be like, I'm tired of this bodega food. And then you get back. You like, man, I'm going straight to the bodega. Straight to the bodega. <laughs> leave, leave the cat on the bread and everything. Yeah, everything, man. Um, but yeah, so I went home. And um, my manager, uh, Corey, he was like, you know what I'm saying? Just get with my cousin. Because he was like, I'm going to stay I'm gonna stay down here and get some stuff on order. I was like, all right, cool. He's like, get with my cousin Quincy when you get up there. And I just just try to record some stuff or whatever. Mm. So, I, and I literally only recorded one song while I was at home. Wow. And, it, and he, played me the, he played me the track for Back of My Lap. And it's just because I'm I'm smoking weed heavy then. I'm drinking cognac heavy then. Mm-hmm. So, I was just like. Man, because we I was talking to Quincy, I was just like, man, I don't think I'm going back, man. This music thing is whack, bro. Yeah. Like I had a full time, I had a full time job, part time job, two cars mm. to move to Atlanta and be broke. Right. For, <laughs> for a year, for over a year and a half. I was like, man, this ain't the business, bro. Mm. And he was like, man, just write whatever you feel. And you know, so that's the story of back of my lap. And wow. I, um immediately as soon as we finished it, we knew we had something. So yeah. I I, um, I sent it to my manager. I text him. I said, yo, check your email. I just sent you something. He said, man, if you don't get back on, on the bus or the car or the train or however you're getting back to Atlanta, I need you to get back now because this is it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we got it. We Because yeah. like, even still to then, I didn't have my sound. Mm. You know what I'm saying? My yeah. sound wasn't there yet. You know, and... um. That was when everybody was like, okay, this is this is where he about to, this is where he's gonna sit mm-hmm. in the solo and be in the and solo and, now RB. And I think a lot of times people don't don't take that into consideration. When you're with a group for so long, you all of you guys become one sound, right? You become Absolutely. one one voice. So it's hard yeah. to separate and find your own oneness when yeah. you've been with somebody or people for a long amount of time. So yeah. you did that on back of my lap. So where did bed come from? Where did how did that get inputted into this? Uh, so when I got back to Atlanta, because I told him I said, "Man, I gotta make some money or something, bro. Like I can't just be down and broke." He's like, "All right, I'm gonna get you some money gigs." You know what I'm saying? Basically, go in and reference songs for writers yeah. to sell to other people or whatever. So Dream, um, he wrote Suffer Cake, and he needed me to come in and reference it. And uh, my manager was like. Because they pay me for it, you know, they pay me to reference it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like 200, $250 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, but my manager was like, hey, before you go in there, he was like, make sure they can't sell it. Mm-hmm. Like, what you mean? Because it was, it was supposed to be for Marianne. He was like, um, just do what you do. Right. And I said, oh, make sure they can't sell it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I went in. So I did suffocate. Um, um. And then, you know, we just forgot about it. And now, um, like, it was, ah, it was, like, like I said, man, one, one thing was, it was, it was lonely. It was still lonely. <laughs> of you course. Know and, um, and just trying to figure everything out. So we're recording. We got bad. We got without you. We got black in my lap. Uh, we got fatal. Uh, we got fallen. Um, well, I know I'm missing another song. Um, it's it's another song skipping um, that's that's slipping my brain right now. Ghetto. But yeah, we got ghetto, and so <clears throat> so we was like, all right, we got the album, but it's just because we had to be with me. Uh, we we went to Atlantic City, and um, 
because I did without you with um, Adana Sharpshire. Mm-hmm. And um, he, he at the time was working with Rodney Jergens. Yeah. You know, so, so without you is a, is also a Rodney Jergens uh, track, even though uh, he doesn't say Rodney Jergens on it. That's that's a Rodney Jergens track or whatever. Okay. So we did that record. Rodney heard it and said, "Nah, I want to do a song personally with him. I need y'all to get him to Atlantic City so I can do something with him in the studio." That's mm. when we did. That's when we did "Be with Me." Yeah. So it was like, "All right, cool. This is gonna be the first single." You know what I'm saying? So we did mm-hmm. the video. Did the video for that. Well, mind you, I'm, I don't skip way fast forward. I got signed. Let's just say after I did back in my life, I got signed. Yeah. So now it's money behind it. I'm like, I'm not just getting in the studio with these people. <laughs> they <laughs> took money behind. <laughs> so they flew. Because I was like, hold on, how did how did how did they get me to Atlantic City? Yeah. So they flew me onto Atlantic City, and um, so we did be with me. Shot the video, and we was like, ah, uh, it's there, but it's just something is there. Not. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, people, the people love me, but they love me back home. Right. We shot the video in front of Ben's Chili Bowl, and so I'm I'm buzzing back home, but I hadn't hit, I hadn't reached the people yet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like the like the masses. They was like, we need that song that's gonna hit the masses, and so my label was like, all right, it's cool. We just gonna come down. We gonna brainstorm, and we not leaving Atlanta without a record. So I'm mm-hmm. running around. I'm probably in a strip club somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, I'm running around. Probably somewhere high, ain't no telling. <laughs> but <laughs> hey, say no to drugs, kids. But, no, um, <laughs> but uh, and I mean off of weed, I ain't talking about drugs. <clears throat> but um, my manager called me and said I need you to get to the studio right now. I'm like, right now, right now. He's like, right now. I'm like, oh man, okay, this because I already knew my label was in town. So I'm like, yeah. right, I got, I got to get dressed. I got to look the part. I got to. Uh. So I get down there and they say go in the studio and record that record. Mm. I'm like, I, ain't, I ain't even heard the record yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? They have been down there powwowing like, this is the record. <laughs> and I was like, man, let me go listen to this record. And was, I was like, who wrote it? It's like Dream. I said, all right, cool. Because I already had a, a a relationship with Dream. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, at least I know it's going to be a good record. Because right. <clears throat> so I went in there and I was like, Okay, but the reference was in falsetto, so it was it was it was kind of it was kind of hard for me to, to to click in with it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So you know, I'm starting to record the record. That's how you come in with the falsetto, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's what he kind of did in the beginning. So I was yeah. like, I'm just mimicking him. And then I'm sitting and trying to record this record in falsetto, and it's just now I'm starting to hate the record. Uh. Like, like I mean, I get it; it sounds good for Dream, but. Right. But how do you make it Jay Holiday? Yeah, I'm like, I'm not liking it. So they just in there like, we got one. Ha, ha, they in there <laughs> and I'm like, and not knowing. I'm in the booth like, yo, this record is stupid. I don't even want this record no more. <laughs> but uh, so so the engineer at the time, Scott, he said, what's wrong? I said, man, I'm just not feeling it. I was like, I don't, I don't want to sing it like this. He was like, well, how would you sing it? Now, by this time, I know the record front was backwards because I've been sitting there trying to record it. I said, start it from the top. Mm. And then that's where you get the full voice. Yes. And they was like, that's it right there. Mm. You know and, and so that's how Bed came about, man. And um, yeah, they bought they bought the record that night. Um, and that 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 shot hit the moon. And then they was like, okay, got be with me. We got bad. We now we can't, we got we got the attention. We need another record. Uh. What is that record gonna be? And then somebody said. Let's see if Dream still got suffocate. Mm. And he still had it. And now, mind you, this is years later. This is like right. two, two to maybe two years later. He still had it. Well, no, I'm it's maybe about a year later. Uh-huh. He still he still had the record. And to this day, the records are here on suffocate. That's the actual reference I did. I never oh, went wow. back, I never went back in and recorded anything else on suffocate. So you did it that first time, and then that and was it. That's what it was. So. Wow. Wow. <laughs> he said, okay, now I get it. <laughs> I get it. Uh, yeah, I get it now. Okay. All right. So yeah. you do this, you know, and I know there was even like a little controversy. I was even back in my day when I you know, was younger, I would see the, oh, this is supposed to be for Chris Brown bed mm-hmm. originally, right? Um, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm pretty sure it well, had everything to do with but, well, no, I mean, so before Dream got to the studio, because they called him down there like, yo, we need to play, play us some records. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he was like, mm, man, what I got, what I got, what I got. He was like, well, I got this record I just sent Chris. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I can play that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everybody knows in the business. It ain't, it don't belong to nobody until it's paid for. Mm, come on. 
You understand what I'm saying? That's why I said they paid for it that night. That night. <laughs> <laughs> they paid for it before I even got to the studio. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? They right. struck the check for it. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I don't know if Chris ever had a chance to hear it. I don't know. You know, they wasn't leaving it to chance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so to be honest, it just belonged to you. I'm sorry. No shame, yeah. but it did. It belonged no, to you. No, I mean... Chris had his hits already, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Let me get one in, bro. Let me get in the ring. You know what I mean? Let me get one, <laughs> one real quick, man. But no, um, you know, like, I, like I've been saying, man, what's for you can't, can't nobody take from you, man. So mm, that's it, right. was just, it was the right moves, the right time, and the right everything aligned at the right time. And, and you know what's crazy? The man that actually stepped in as um, basically like the the – he was running R and B over at Capitol. Um, Ronnie Johnson. He's the one that came down, um, and he he came from Atlantic. You know what I'm saying? So he he was influential in Trey Songz uh, jumping off, and and um, so uh, he left uh, Atlantic for whatever reason, and um, he came over to Capitol, and he was like, "What are y'all doing? We need mm. to get this guy some records. Like, I don't care what whatever y'all spending money on, y'all can cancel all that right now. Cancel Christmas right now. We need to put everything behind Jay. So that's why he right. came to Atlanta." Stroke the check. Rest in peace, Ronnie Johnson. He died mm. maybe, maybe like in the middle of my first year when everything was like wow. When everything like at was the up prime. Here. And it was just like some people come come into your life or come around for specific reasons. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna say that's the last thing he was supposed to do, but um i definitely thank god that uh, he placed them in that position to to make it happen for me you know, you know and that's and like you said <laughs> some people are your those, those mysterious angels that are needed mm -hmm. to propel you right yep. um yep. and that's big you know and after you get mm -hmm. you get these two amazing hits how do you stay humble how do you keep your mind focused on the keep it on the ground you 10 toes down when you are now at the height of, of your success? Well, I know I'm fam famous for the, um, you know, if I could do it without the fame, I would, you know. Mm. Um, I've always been famous as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Like, and, and, and when I say that, you know, I mean, I know it sounds arrogant or conceited or whatever, but, um, you know, just growing up, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I didn't belong to any group of people. Mm -hmm. I knew the nerds. I knew the I knew the the, the sports, the jockeys. I knew the, yeah. the you know what I'm saying? I knew everybody and everybody knew me. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I've always been dealing with that, that yeah. kind of attention, especially once we started these after school programs and we putting on shows. I've been I've been in that world. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's a different beast on on this level. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But um I will honestly take it all, I would take it all the way back to my mom. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, yeah, man. I, I don't know. Just what she taught me and just the things that I went through. You know what I'm saying? Um, so mm -hmm. I was losing my dad at a young age and stuff like that. Um, yeah, man. Now, I'm not as humble as people think I am. I mean, I am. I, yeah. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm more of a, what you call a a-hole a with industry people. Mm -hmm. like fans, fans ain't got nothing to do with that. You know right. what I'm saying? You can't right. take out how you feel about the industry on your fans. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your fans should be absolutely oblivious to any of that stuff that's going on. And they should mm -hmm. just enjoy their interactions with you. You know, um, I think some people just start being on a, you don't know who I am. And sometimes maybe they don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe they just don't listen to you or maybe you don't even do their type of music. Bro. Like, Come on. You can't just necessarily assume somebody's supposed to know who you are. Right. You know what I mean? Now, um, yeah, man, just, I, I don't know. Just, and I guess I've dealt with so many different artists. I'm just like, yo, people really be acting like this. So, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't going to call nobody out, but yeah. And it's so true. Like, people do act like that. But what you sound like in the studio versus what you sound like in real life are completely separate. You know what I mean? Once again, no shade, but I'm gonna call it what it is. You know, you know, it is, it is, it is what it is. Which is why I think I like out of all the songs on back in my life, I have to say that Ghetto was my favorite. And That's what's up. and I think for me it was because you spoke about that truth, right? That even in this, even in this moment of all that mm -hmm. I'm in, 
there's this real life going on back home. Oh this boy, happening. absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think um, when I was talking about the president, I think it was a uh, was it George Bush at the time. I was like, in the in the, in the president ain't doing it. Yeah. Like I think it was George Bush at the time. George Bush, yeah. <clears throat> so I was like, people don't understand. Like we got millions and millions and millions of tourists that come through our city every year. You know, even yeah. in New York. You know, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Um, and to not know that it's people like it's it's homeless people sleeping on the ground on the on the grates, two blocks from the White House. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Come on. <laughs> like, like, and like, seriously, just trying to stay warm in the wintertime. You know yep. what I mean? It, 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 you know, it gets cold up north. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think so, about that too. When, um, so this year, the, the you know, at the Mets Gala, uh-huh. you know, I live out here. So I went past and I'm like, there's no way you guys are having a Met Gala. And across the street, the guy is sleeping on the floor with a blanket. You guys have to walk over this man to go take uh, a picture wow. at the Met Gala. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. It's just that well, yeah. real life. I appreciate I appreciate it though, man, because um that was a that was a big that was a big I don't think enough R and B artists. I mean, like I said, I was I was patterning myself after Marvin Gaye. So mm-hmm. it was I gotta speak on something. I'm not saying yeah. it's gonna be what's going on, but you know, I was just basically talking about what's going on at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, and it was what it was. He was talking about that beyond Vietnam War or whatever, but you know yeah. what I'm saying? But um, yeah, you know, so I appreciate that, bro. No, nah, you know, and a lot of people, you know, even when in the beginning when I, I mean, you were here, and then I was like, okay, but where, where, what happened to the man? What, what's going on? Is, is my brother okay? You know, and um, I realized that, you know, people just because you said because they don't know, they just automatically mm-hmm. assume, right? Oh, he mm-hmm. fell off, or they released him, or he got dropped. And just to clear, mm-hmm. the, to make the record clear, you've never been dropped from anything. Ever. You've never yeah. been dropped. And I want to kind of speak about that because you mentioned L.A. Reed and mm-hmm. you left you left Capitol mm-hmm. and then you met up with L.A. Reed again. Right. So let's talk about that. Um, I know he was literally, when you spoke to him again, he was literally getting ready to leave uh, sure. Def Jam. Yeah. He was on X Factor at the time. Um, yeah. But he signed you to Def Jam. So how yeah. was that for you in that process? Oh, um, honestly, he was like, bro, it's going to be a little rough out here for you. Um, you know, he signed me to give me a check. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To get, to get me in events. Yeah. Because he knew he was he was going to leave and people was, they was going to show. I mean, mm. that was just a, you know, I got a label to work with. I didn't have no relationships at that label. You know what I'm saying? The only relationship I did have at the time was Dream and, and L.A. Reed. You know what I'm right. saying? Uh, but Dream was signed as an artist, so mm-hmm. he got to do his artist thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, man, it was it was cool. You know, he was just like, bro, I ain't gonna let, I ain't gonna let you just hang out here in the balance. So at least I'm gonna put you in a position where put some money in your pocket, and you know what I'm saying. Hopefully, you can make something happen from here. Mm-hmm. You know, and I just I ended up sitting for two and a half years, but um, you know, everybody's journey is, is their journey, bro. Right. You know what I mean? I, I oh. mean. Uh, I ain't complaining. It was, it was frustrating, but you know what I mean. Like, what can yeah. you say? I, I can right. say I was signed to Def Jam. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody can't say that. So, <laughs> you know, there's some people don't get one deal, let alone two. So. Right. So how you know you 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 release yourself from Def Jam after sitting there for two and a half years? Because of course, what the hell am I sitting here for? And you guys aren't willing to. Put this budget yeah. on making oh, these wow. albums. Yeah, let me go. Let right. Me, let me just go fell on my own then. Right. right. Now, that's all I'm doing is sitting here. Mm-hmm. Right. Basically, <laughs> kind of waiting, waiting, and yeah. getting all of these hopes and dreams, and nothing kind of going to fruition. So, how do we keep motivation? What happens? Because that's hard. Being on a label um, and just kind of being stuck there. I was still doing like mixtapes and stuff. Like I was still feeding my feeding that inner that inner beast of an artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was still I was still getting out my creativity. It was just like anytime I would put something up and like it start moving, they would block it. Mm. Like, but y'all not trying to put no music out on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm pressing right. up my own mixtapes and just 
different things and they just kept blocking just kept blocking so i was just like man just just let me go then you know what i'm saying and um so i mean the the motivation was i mean regardless of if nothing happens from here i made it you know what i'm saying yeah. like what i got to complain about you know what i mean mm-hmm. um i people know me around the world you know what i mean i'm on my second passport yeah i might be sitting on dev jam but i might you know what i'm saying like mm. it's, some people always try to find something to complain about brand, but trust me, it's it's. I always tell people it's always somebody that's worse off than you. So that's right. You know, that is so so how, right. That's how I stay motivated. <laughs> and you know, and you 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 going through your share, but like you know, I even kind of um go back to what 2018, where that whole you went live and you put up that video out, which for me I understood. I want to say that before we even dive in, I understood the conversation of. Um, it's kind of feeling like we were, we're, we were living in the time and we still are where artists specifically like, you know, women were kind of like downplaying us as men Absolutely. and things of that nature. And it's like, okay, how are you going to tell me to go to the left when I help pay your bills? I'm sorry. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like how are we making songs like these? And there's no encouragement. And I got to right? deal, deal with these women out here. That's right. That's you know, feeding right. into that. Right. I got to go. <laughs> I got to go back to a Pandora's box that you did that you opened. You know what I mean? And and then what? You know what I'm saying? It, it may be right. it's a check for you, but it's reality for me. You know, and that's, I know that absolutely. I know that you caught some flat for that. I I I, I was. Once again, I was live listening to Charlemagne the God kind of give you, give you some, give you a buck fifty for this. But you took that and you came up with time because and, uh, you, this. Oh, you talking about when he said, uh, "Get off the sideline." Yes, get off the oh, sideline. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and um, <laughs> some people would have me the, the petty New York. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. get my word in. I would have been like a back and forth thing. Well, you took that you, and go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, he, he, he at that time, I mean, and, and to understand what Charlemagne does, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I've never been a fan of, of those type of hosts. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, that's just, that's just me personally. I don't like gossip. I don't like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of like a beat up factor, but then it's like, you live in a social, social media world where folks have to be careful what they say, be careful what they do, because somebody going to talk about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I had to understand and respect his opinion because all he was doing was commenting on my opinion so mm-hmm. that's that's what it is is the opinions go back and forth nobody's uh an expert on this yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. like that nobody's an expert on life mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you know, that's, a lot of people would claim that they are but you know so that's what it was man you got to take that motivation and be like oh they thought they thought the kid ain't have it no more right Oh, they like, thought I wasn't in the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Nah, I was just in the locker room, man. I was Come chilling. On, right. I was chilling, right. <laughs> I was playing. I was playing. Like, you, oh, okay. All right. So you I was, it was icing my knees, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's all I was doing. But no, I, I understood it. And, and like, it's, it's frustrating. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that wasn't the only time that I, I you know, I spewed out some stuff. But, um, my people know when I say something, man, he's like, oh, Jay, Jay really mean this. Y'all might want to leave him alone about it. You know, and what's funny is the thing that I don't like, this this is what I don't like about this social media world. If you agree with somebody and you feel like that they're being bashed, come to their rescue. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Speak up for them. Don't yeah. see me in the street and be like, Man, you remember you, you what you were right. saying? You were right. You was right. Like, man, I don't want to hear that now, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's here. just like, <laughs> come on, man. Like, you, you gotta, we all gotta look out for each other. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. then I had to realize I'd rather be the positive, positive artist than mm. to seem like I'm 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 hating on um being negative or because yeah. my people to tell you, I really don't care. But if I'm feeling bothered about something, once it's off me, it's off me. I ain't thinking about it no more. Mm-hmm. I'm, done, I'm done with it. I said what I said. You know right. what I'm saying? And they like, man, I think you should apologize. For what? what? Right. <laughs> For what? Now, I, I can apologize if somebody feels like I, I, I disrespected them. Mm-hmm. Or if I called them out of character or called, you know what I'm saying? But passed out, I'm not going to apologize for what I said specifically, you know, I might be like, oh, that. I shouldn't have used the B word or, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, like, I can, I can, I grew up in a house full of women, so I can definitely understand that, Yeah. but, um, yeah, like, we in, we in an apology uh, era now, 
Yeah, like, because we're also, in a, we're also in a sensitive era as well. You know what I mean? Oof, boy, I'm talking about sensitive, but yeah. man. You can't um, say nothing anymore, you know? Nothing. Like, I be... It's so sad, man. And, and I, what's crazy is there's so many different groups of people, um, white, black, and different, where we can't really say anything to each other. And then the minute we do, we're racist. Or yeah. um, or if you go against like the LGBT community or something, or if you saying something to one specific person, it's like, oh, you against all of us, like, I, 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 we got to figure out how to how to fix that part. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? How we yeah. can not, not be so sensitive and, and 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 have and have intelligent conversations about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, it's probably not gonna happen. But you know what I'm saying? I just feel like like you were saying. Like I feel like we need to start running from dialogue, right? We expect everybody to be right. like minded and have the same opinions. And as soon as somebody right. else is like, well, maybe this is what it should be. It's automatically you're attacking us, and it's like no, I just told you that it would work for you, don't work for me. That's it. Yeah, I just said I didn't like your shoes. That was right. it. That's it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, man, and 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 that's how you stay motivated, man. And and COVID, I think COVID kind of kind of held the mirror in front of a lot of people's faces. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, regard, people could sit here and be like, I was making money. You weren't making the money you was making though. You know That's right. Every everything slowed down for everybody. You That's know so I mean? true. And I think a lot of people had a chance to sit back. So I think people. I think people are coming out of the pandemic a lot of better people, though. To be honest, yeah. That's what. Yeah. That's what I. That's what I've seen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. Um, and I think, I, and I want to say, like, even in that moment, it taught us no matter how rich or famous or wealthy you are, we were all one paycheck away or two from being homeless. Yeah. It's the yeah. truth. We or, were all. Or, or, or or germ away from, from being dead. Being you know dead, right. Mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got I got you, man. But that's how you stay motivated. So that spending that time and people being like, where he been and time and time waits for no man. So it's like I can't expect people to be like, I mean, of course, bad and suffocating and be with me and a few of my other records are always gonna live, they're gonna live on forever. But you some people get caught in this moment in time where I mean, especially a lot of artists get caught in this moment in time of but this is what I accomplished. I mean, yeah. you know, I'll be I'll be performing those records forever. Yeah. But people move people move on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? People move on, and then you become a throwback. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You the th- you the throwback dude now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, just letting people know that time. I just want people to understand how important time is, man. Mm-hmm. Like time is it don't wait for nobody and. You know, granted, I still, I still look at myself like, man, you done slept way too many hours today. Mm. Like you could have this, you could have this something productive, bro. <laughs> like I know you don't have to do anything today, but you could have this. So you could have walked around the neighborhood or something, anything. You know what I mean? But um, I mean, and but you got to be able to 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 look at yourself and, and look at your habits and look at your uh, the way you treat people, the way you talk to people. You know what I'm saying? Because time yeah. man, is a uh, it's 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 a funny thing. That's the only that's the only currency. I don't care how much money you got. That's the one currency can't nobody get back at all. No matter how <laughs> much you want to build something or scientists can tell you something, yeah. you cannot get time back. Mm-mm. No matter how hard you try, you, you know, could try to, you can try to extend it, but you can't right. get none of it back. You can't get it back, right? Now, for you going from being on a record label to now being a label owner at Imprint Holiday Music Group, mm-hmm. what was the difference for you um, in what you what you were able to put out, your level of creativity? Did that all change for you? Were you able to now change the narrative of what you wanted to be and who you wanted to be as an artist? Um, absolutely. Well, I mean, ownership is key. Um, you know, I've always had my own company, but my company was just collecting my money, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Following my taxes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, when you did business with Jay Holiday, people were always doing business with another company that I was signed to or that I had paperwork with. Like, yeah. it just puts me in an ownership role to, if you're dealing with Jay Holiday, I don't care who you are. You got to do it. And and I'm not signing to you. We can partnership. Yeah. We can, split the, we can, we can split some stuff, but 
I'm not, I'm, I'm never signing to anybody ever again. Like, not mm-hmm. outright. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, and that's just, you know, of course, obviously the money's better and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, man. And, and this is what I've been trying to teach, like, all these artists that I've been dealing with and trying to um, bring out and, and showcase their music. I was just like, yo, if you don't have your own, if you don't have your own label or your own, your own thing where I got to do business with you, I, I can't deal with you because I'm yeah. not trying to, I'm not trying to own nobody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, I mean, it's, people be like, that's stupid. Why would you tell them that? Because that's growth. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, why you got to own everything? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you, oh, true. you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can, you can give people knowledge, man. You know, you can help them out and be like, bro, look, this is how you do it. You want to work with me? I can get you to the right people, get you in the right places, but have your own business, bro. Like, have your own label. Sign yourself to yourself and make people do business with that mm-hmm. company that you created. Yeah. And you also build community, right? Like, yeah, and I think absolutely. that's that's what we miss. Even as a culture, as a race, the lack of community right sure. unity as it you know what i'm saying somebody was saying to me the other day you know we don't have communities no more we have neighborhoods because yeah. people especially us we lack that you know what i mean we, yeah. we offer <laughs> ourselves whatever we can get and we lose the fact that we need each other more than we think we do absolutely absolutely and and you see some people doing it but um it's very far and few between uh I think it's kind of getting better because with social media, you can you can um, you can basically collab more freely now, you know, mm. because of social media and streaming. You know, um, the labels are like, "Oh my God, we're not needed anymore." You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. well, did you think we was gonna need y'all forever? Now, I understand. There's artists that are still on major labels, you know, yeah. what I mean? and because these major labels still want to put their money behind them because they're thinking about the masters, they're thinking about. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there thinking about, okay, well, what are we still getting from them? Right. And it's obviously something because they're still putting the money up. You know right. what I mean? So, um, but yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure a lot of those artists as well are signed to themselves. Mm-hmm. You know? But it's just, they're so big that label is just like, but well, we, we still got to deal with you. Right. We got to deal with you, right? <laughs> we got to deal with you. Right? <laughs> <gotta> deal with <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but like, um, yeah, man, that's 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 why I did Holiday Music Group, man. Just because I was just like, man, I, look, I ain't even got no artists right now. I mean, at the time, it was just like, I ain't had no artists in mind or nothing. I'm just like, yeah, no, I need to be signed to myself. Mm. And that's amazing. That's an amazing thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so this past February, you released Time. Mm-hmm. 25 to Life being the lead single off of that album. Um, mm-hmm. For you, what was the inspiration but behind that, before we, besides what we talked about, about the whole conversation of it all, um, mm-hmm. what was your inspiration behind that that entire album, or wanting to do it and getting back out here? Um, just uh, when you hear like, and this isn't to downplay anybody that's out or any of their music, but. When you start not having anywhere to go to feed your soul, because I, I listen to artists, I listen to different artists, and I'm just yeah. like, I have nothing to listen to now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening because- to Bruno or, or Tank, or you know what I mean, which is very few. It used to be a lot. Like, I can go listen to this person, I can yeah. go listen to that person. And it's just like, what people are like, you don't know what's out. I'm like, man, no, because at this point, what am I looking for? You know what I'm saying? Like I listen, I listen to Jasmine Sullivan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like she she killing the game. Um, but then there's other people that people love that's in her lane that I'm just like, all right, all right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I said, I ain't gonna throw no names out there, but <laughs> no, because you know, at this point it's not about being negative. So but um that's why, you know what I'm saying? So people yeah. can be like, Man, where do I go to hear some good RB? Well, you can come, mm. you can come listen to my album. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, and just and giving people something to actually think about, mm. you know what I mean. Um, and you know, still getting them in the bedroom when they need to. You know what I, mean? <laughs> um, I think I'm probably, you know, I'm not gonna say I'm the best at it, but I mean, you know, I did have a song called Bed, so that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like self explanatory, but now nah, just um, so people could have some, some so they can have another option, mm. Let's you know, say. and you write, you write. <laughs> And in this album, for you, when you think about your process and your writing process, what was the song on this album for you that was like, 
oh, this is it. This is this has to go on the album. Um, drip. That was the last song we put on the album. You know, so um, I knew you was gonna say that. I was saying you probably wouldn't, but drip is definitely it. It gives me a um, it gives me thong song ish. Like, bye. You are the first person that ever picked up on that. Oh, I wasn't. Oh, because I was like, so I specifically this- did it like that on purpose. And I said, yo, I want to make a I want to make a slow drag joint that's like dog song. It's one like, verse. The whole process, <laughs> like how you flip that verse is one time. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Jeez, uh, like- <laughs> you're the first person that picked up on it, bro. And then sometimes you just gotta explain it to people like. It's only one verse. They like, hold on, for real. One so, verse. It's only one verse. Mm. It's mm. just the way that it's, it's. I was like, man, how did how did how did this go through that? Because <laughs> I was just like, it got it. It can be done again. Mm-hmm. It just has to be, you know. And yeah. I, I, that's that's crazy that you picked up on that. But yeah, man. So that was the last song we put on the album. And when I was done, I was I was happy about it. It has a good vibe to it, and. That's probably the, well, I'm not going to say it's not about time, but, you know, it's it's about uh, an activity that people spend their time doing. Yeah, do it, right. It's <laughs> <laughs> <All> time. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'm yeah. glad you picked up on that, though. Same That's thing. Dope. Same thing. So, I don't know who I was speaking to when I first heard 1440. And I'm like, guys. Yeah. This it's minutes in the day, like, and people were yeah. just like blown. And I'm like, guys, it's an album called Time. Everything about this album is going to be associated somehow, some way, with time. It's a time. And yeah. when when 1440, when I first heard it, I was like, this man is doing math during this, and no one is going to pick it up if they're not listening or paying attention. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh yeah, because of the minutes in the day. And yeah. it was so it was so clever. It was so so clever. So for you, um, I had read that you like writing, you like performing, but you don't like anything else of the process. Why? Man, it's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's just time consuming, man. You know, um, everybody's like, man, how you record that song so fast? Because I hate recording. It's just I want to get as the the best product with not the least amount because I don't take shortcuts. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I know people that take shortcuts. I don't take shortcuts, but I just wanted to be just better versed in 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 recording. So I so my process doesn't because if I if I record for too long, I'm gonna get you know you get aggy. You get mm-hmm. it's like all right, I'll come back to this or whatever. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But sometimes sometimes you never come back to it. You know what yeah. I mean? So. I just like my process to be better. And like, I, I love performing. I love the people, like video shoots, photo shoots. Uh, I, I could just really do without it. But Because mm-hmm. you know, I think I've always thought this, you know, some people just sing because they have a passion for it. And some people yeah. do it for the lights, camera, you know, action yeah. of it all. And I feel like you've always been that, that individual, for me anyway. Like, for okay, sure. the pictures and all of that cute stuff. I just want to be able to sing because I love what I do, right? Like, yeah. you're the type of, I think about, I think about the ABCs, right? There's certain people who I know can sing the ABCs and kill that <laughs> shit. You're one of those people because of your love for it. singing. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. when you mention, and like you said, you're not dragging nobody down, but there are certain people out here who sing from their passion, from their purpose, from what they've been for through. Sure. And then there are people who just sing because you got a voice. You know what I mean? What's up? And that's it, it's a separation, and I think a lot of us now, especially Absolutely. this generation, you don't get it. You know what I mean? You don't get it. You you know what they think is R and B now, so right, right. And I think you yeah. know when I think about I was watching that tank interview. When I think about like R and B being dead, and it's like it's not that it's dead. It's just that people are not woke to what soul singing is, what's coming in from here, right. what you've been yeah. through, singing about. You know, being homeless or being broke or what's going on in the world right now, like everything is not so pop go lucky. It's not unicorns and rainbows. You know what for I mean? Sure. It's real life happening. Yeah. You know, so for you, what keeps you wanting to write and wanting to produce? Because in times such as these, 
it could be draining as hell. Oh man, um, you gotta speak from like you gotta. You know how they be like, uh, somebody's story saved my life, or mm. you know, or, or you heard somebody's story and you was just like, oh man, I never thought of it like that. Yeah, you know, it's about sharing your life and your experiences with people. I try to put more personal stuff on my music now because it helps people. You know what I'm saying? Like, music is supposed to be healing. Even if you, even if you're listening to that song, that that just you like when I'm when I'm mad at this one person, I'm gonna go listen to my favorite song because they, they cussing them out on the song. They're like I bust the windows out your car, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a bunch of females that listen to that song all the time. Like, mm-hmm. yep, I, yep, you know. And but it's it still gets that emotion out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes if you hold it in, it ain't gonna do nothing but fester up anyway. You know That's what I'm so saying? True. So. Sometimes so listening to music is is what's the what helps the healing process. So I think for me, that's what it is for me. Just like I said, giving 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 people another option to have, mm. and then also to to share my my stories or like you said, like we we specifically try to be clever on this yeah. album. You know, we want we want you to have to think. Yeah, you know what I mean. We we want you, we want you to sit down and be like, hold on, I I mean, okay. <laughs> like, even, like even with Hourglass like you know like that song is basically talking about how people bring baggage into a relationship mm. when, you're trying to, when you're trying to start a new relationship and all you're doing is taking yourself who's the Hourglass yeah. and just flipping it over you're still the same person same person still, right it's still, it's still the same time coming through <laughs> you know what I mean it's broken dude yeah. it's broken it's the Hourglass yeah. you know what I'm saying it's so, so true yeah. You know, when you think, when I think about creativity, right, and all the things that I do, um, I, I want to ask you, if you weren't singing or producing or having your own label, what would you be doing? Um, there's something that I'm also getting into at the moment, which is writing movies. You know what mm. I'm saying? Um, I'm a movie buff. I watch any movie one time, but... Um, What's your favorite? Of all time? I don't know. I, 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 have, some, I have too many. You know what I mean? Oh, um, man. Hey, I mean, you I mean choose, you choose three. Three? Yeah. That's still hard, though. You know, because I, I like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, one of my favorites growing up was Menace Society. I could watch that movie probably 10 times in a day. And pretend like <laughs> you didn't see it before. Because <laughs> uh, that is I me. Used to sneak and watch, yeah, I used to sneak and watch that movie all the time. But um, let me see. Uh. Man, it's so many, man. Like, like I love like biopics. Like I could watch Malcolm X. Um, you know, uh I I mean obviously I could watch Get On Up, you know, James Brown. Like, like I, I, I like I love biopics, but it's it's I'm gonna come up with some I love comedy. Like I can watch a comedy all day long. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh comedy on top of comedy on top of comedy on top of comedy. Like I just uh pulled up all about the Benjamins just to watch one part. <laughs> I just, I just feel like I'm talking to a cousin right now. Like, we are, <laughs> I, like I just want to hear him yelling, and you can hear him all the way down the hallway when he runs into the house. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to hear that part because you know it's, you know, so I can watch comedies. I, I, you know, um, like Boomerang is one is, is a favorite. Mm. You know, Love Jones is a favorite. You know, yeah. well, well, well written movies. You know, what I'm yeah. saying? So I, I would be doing it. I like this. It's still storytelling to me. You know what I'm saying? It's the, that's what music is for me. But you know, movies is just a longer, a longer song. Yeah. You know, and now speaking about and, and it's kind of all the thing that you love, music being your first, your first love. If you could speak to the younger version of yourself from 2007 to who you are right now, what would you say to yourself? Um I would probably just like well, I said I've been asked this before. I would probably just be like, just know when to shut up. Mm. And and I and I mean not in a in a way of I knew so much. I read so many books and I knew I knew um contracts and I knew all the stuff they didn't want me to know. I, yeah. and I was very, very uh I was very um like out, out there with it to let them know I, I, you're not getting over on me. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, but sometimes when you tell them that you know too much, 
and they just try to figure out another way to to get over to go around you. Yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying. So, yeah. um, I've I've definitely been taken advantage of a few times in this industry, but and that's just because they they took the only power that they could do, which was not do anything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That the biggest yeah. power a label can do is just nothing. That's so true, <laughs> like, you know right? Since, since, you, since you know so much. <laughs> <laughs> you can sit your ass right down there and you do it, right? Yeah, you do it then. So that's why I said I would, I would probably tell, tell myself, just know when to, just know when to not tell them too much. You know which battles to fight. Yeah. I like that. I definitely do like that. So I, if you could, I was fighting them all. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I was fighting them all, yeah. man. And sometimes you have to, right? Because you gotta let people know you're not gonna clown me or punk me or make me believe mm-hmm. something that I know isn't true, right? right. It is what exactly. it is, you know. So thinking about this, you know, you got time out and that's doing well. What do you have? What do you have coming up next? Or is there a tour? Like, what can we expect? Um, yeah, we got a, a city winery tour that we're putting together. We're going to um, put the dates out for that um, soon. I got a festival that I'm about to do. We got to go to Amsterdam. This, it's June, right? Yeah, we got to go to Amsterdam this month. Um, nice. Amsterdam and London. Um, so, yeah, just just a lot of uh, traveling and, and doing shows. And um, um, I need to get on this because uh, I, I want to finally put out uh, some holiday music. So, yeah. Mm. Um, you know, this would be this would be my first time putting out some some Christmas music for you <laughs> all. You know what I'm saying? Some some family love. Type, Come on, you man! Know, you better hang on a minute, though. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, I, I'm about to do that uh, for sure. It's probably gonna be like two, probably like a four song joint, um, like two originals, two um, two covers. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, just to put some. You know, I'm like, how my name's there? Holiday. I ain't never no holiday yeah. music out. You know, so oh, I'm gonna man. do that, and um, and then probably put out another project next year. You know, That's just cool. keep, just 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 keeping it going. You know, with the streaming thing, it's like people just the videos is getting cheaper. To, it's it's just like all right, just listen, go stream the music, listen to right, music. You right. Know I mean? yeah. You know, thank you. I gotta thank you so much for coming by and being a part of I'm the still. show. I, I had such a good time. Thank you for ending the night so well, so eloquently. I mean. I, I feel like I laugh at you all day. I, I really feel like I gained my cousin. You know what I mean? I really feel like I gained, I gained the cousin. When we, when we in the area, because you said you were in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. When we in the area, um, you know, everything's kind of like a high skip and a jump. Um, we'll let you know if we somewhere close. And then okay. Just, you know what I'm saying? Let's come out of fellowship, bro. Let's do it. Well, everybody, What's thank up? you for watching. This is not my cousin. I'm telling you right now. This is Cousin Holiday. Please make sure, sure. you, if you have not yet the album yet, Go get time. It's out everywhere. Please make sure you follow him. You support everything he has going on. We love you over here at Courtney's Corner. And we'll see you soon, because this is not the last time we'll have you on the show. I love you. Absolutely. I love you all for watching, and have a good one.